everybody. Good morning. asked that question last week I think it really helped that I've been here before that Jeff had been here before that Brian had been here before and and you know you got a bunch of guys on the staff that you know maybe were raised here or from here or from Kentucky and so I think the whole feeling out process of them trying to figure out if we were really for them or I don't think we had to deal with that as much so and then we just got lucky with a with a great group of guys who really bought in. They bought in and uh, are really willing to do what we ask them to do. So it's been, it's been a fun group to coach. Coach, in three games you guys have allowed like 50, 56 unanswered points. What things have you all been focusing on in that aspect leaning into the Miami game defensively? You say we've allowed 56 unanswered points? Oh, you mean like yeah, a flurry yeah. type of situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest with you, uh, you know, they had a drive a last game. Uh, and then, you know, the offense, uh, we, we threw a pick six, right? And then uh, it's second and 20-some-odd yards to go, and they a ball bounces right to them. Uh you know, typically you don't want to allow one bad play to become two, but I don't think we're facing that problem. I think it was a situation where we gave up 17 points in that game. They had one drive. Um, they kicked the field goal for it. I'll, I'll, I'll take 17 points a game all day, every day. Uh, Ron, he, you kind of touched on it with, with that question, but – Last year, that defense relied so much on their pressure yeah. and getting sacks. Yeah. Is it kind of a balance this year where you really shut off the run game and you get pressure as well? And is that the best thing that they do? Well, the secondary seems like they're pretty stout as well. Well, we want, you know, I look at three stats. The, the, the number one stat is loud. That's number one. All right. The second thing I look at is rushing yards per game. Right, because if you can stop the run, then you get to third in some advantageous situations. And then the third stat is uh, percentage of uh, success on third down. That's the three things that I look at. And so if you look at us, I think we're uh, in good shape in all those areas. But we, we want to choke the run off. We want to stop the run. That's where football kind of starts and then get you to a third down where we can get after the quarterback. How would you characterize your relationship with Jeff? I mean, uh, you know, you're – Opposite ends of the spectrum, really, your defense, he's offensive, then known as offense. Well, I've been blessed, like I think I said before, in that, you know, I'm – he's telling me what they don't like, what they don't like to see, what the quarterback doesn't like to see, what fronts they don't like to see, what type of movements they don't like to see. And so uh, it's been awesome because uh, Jeff's a football guy, so I love football and he loves football, so we get along great. But it's, it's a cool thing at this point in my life and my career to just really be able to talk ball with a guy who's an expert at what he does. It'd be different. You know, I'm not guessing. I'm not – he's telling me exactly how they teach it. This is exactly how we teach it. So uh, it's been an advantage for me. And with Jarvis out, Storms obviously stepped in. I guess how would you just describe the way that he's been able to kind of fill in that spot? Well, you know, Storm uh, – has had some good years in the ACC, and he's been an all-ACC player. And uh, I still think he can continue to improve, which I think he is. Uh, believe it or not, I, I felt like at times he needed to be more confident in his abilities. But uh, I like Storm, good kid, good family. He's playing hard. He's getting better. You know, uh, Coach Ellis is an awesome coach and does a great job with those players. So uh, I like Storm, and I think he's going to keep getting better. Ron, you you were mentioning third down. You're in the top ten, I think number six in in third down percentage. You use a lot of different guys, and it's not always the same guys because I I think 
Trey Franklin was in there a little bit last week. Frierson yeah. comes in, Cam Wilson. How do you kind of determine and, and, and how has that been successful? Why has that been successful this year? Well, we wanted to build depth, and as the year has gone on, you know, we, we just keep wanting to help guys improve because at some point they're going to have to go out there and help the team win a game. Uh, we do move some spot guys. To, like last year we were we were missing Jarvis last week. So, you know, we had to move Quincy in there because we wanted him to cover number four, which he did a good job. The guy caught one ball against him. So, I mean, uh, we just really believe in developing guys, getting them ready, because at some point you're going to need all those dudes. And so uh, that that's really the philosophy. Coach, you guys have talked about how important it is to have coaches from this area and building a culture and a program. I asked Jeff this question at the beginning of the year. I'm going to ask you, how important is it having a guy past player like Mark Sander on staff, given the impact he left on the field as a player? Oh, all those guys. I mean, you look at Mark Sander, uh, you look at Brandon Sharp, uh, even Coach Cassidy is back here. And our players love those guys because they, they're Louisville guys. They played here. They care about the program. They're selfless. I mean, this staff is just so unselfish. It's just so much fun to go to work every day because you're dealing with a lot of people who uh, – I'm the coordinator, but I'm, I, but it, there's a lot of input everywhere. And I never am, like, shutting a guy down or not listening to a guy or whatever. So, for our players, they see that. The players see that. So, it's not like they don't take input from every single guy who's out there. And we're just blessed to have some guys out there who have been big-time players here – and beyond here, and are great people. Yeah, Ron, uh, Van Dyke was their quarterback, got pulled. Uh, looks like his replacement is hurt, and he'll be back. What does he do well, and what does Miami try and do when they try and beat teams? He's played a lot of football. You know, that always comes into play. Uh, you know, I think you're – you know, he's been criticized, and I think when you're criticized uh, – as a human being, particularly in the sports world, you're going to go one or two ways. You're either going to, you know, be hardened by it and uh, get better at what you're doing or you're going to fold up. Now, I expect this guy to be hardened by it. I expect him to play his best game against us. Miami is talented. Their offensive line is as athletic as any line we've seen all year long. Maybe the, the most athletic, in my opinion. Uh, they throw the screen game better than anybody I've seen in a long time. Those perimeter and those tunnel screens, they throw them really, really well. They're running, but they have some big backs, smaller backs. They play about five guys. Uh, you know, the tight ends can run and stuff. So uh, it's not only him, but I think the way they're running their offense, they're going to allow him to try to have some success. You know, they run the RPO game. I expect him to screen it out there and give him some easy throws, get his confidence going, and run the ball. You, you use so many guys up front, but it seems like when Jermaine has been healthy and playing well that you're maybe a little bit stronger out there. How much does he bring to that defensive line? Well, if you watch him lately, he's, he's getting back completely healthy, so he's really quick and he's really strong. And uh, he's what I saw on tape. I thought the guy was a pro guy when I got here and studied the tape. And uh, and he, you know, he I think I call him homeboy because he's from California. I'm from California. And I, at first, he was kind of feeling us out, I think, a little bit, just to see, you know, what we were about. But now I feel like he feels comfortable with us and stuff, and I think that helps too. But he's a – I think he's an awesome player. You mentioned Coach Ellis earlier in the staff. You never know when you put a staff together how it's going to gel. You know, you and Mark have obviously worked together, Hagan, but Mark Ivey hadn't with yeah. you guys. Steve Ellis hadn't with you guys. Uh, you know, Carl's there. Can you just speak to what – you guys on the defensive side of the ball have done as a staff? Well, I think it started a few years back when Jeff had some issues with a guy he hired at Purdue. And so he didn't – he kind of wanted it to be a collaborative uh, situation in terms of staff building. And so I was open to that. I didn't have a problem with that, you know. And so when we came here, Coach Hagan and I had obviously worked together and uh, we were the co-coordinators and – and so, you know, we had worked through that dynamic. Well, Steve Ellis was a guy I mentored for a while. And so when we had the chance to get him, I was like, thank you, God. And then Jeff liked him, so it worked out. And he's a selfless guy. The guy's just a no-ego guy, ball coach guy. Uh, and then Ivy, so think about this. 
Mark Ivey had success coaching defensive line here. A lot of success. I mean, you lead the country in sacks. I mean, that's – so he's had a lot of success. He coaches a position he's never really coached at this level, right? And we're – you know, I'm – you know, we can be aggressive in those meetings and I can be demanding. And never once has he felt sorry for himself or flinched or anything. He just coaches hard and he – works really, really hard to try to do a great job for the team. And I tell people this all the time. I mean, that is is so impressive to me, the way Mark Ivey has carried himself and the humility he's shown uh, has been incredible. Uh, so we just been – and then, you know, we got some uh, – like Kiernan Douglas is our graduate assistant. He does an awesome, awesome job, right? Um we got other guys who are working with us um, who are doing awesome, awesome jobs. So it's not it's, – it's, it goes past the full-time staff, like Malik Miles. It goes to him or like John. It goes to him or like – so it's more than just the full-time staff. It's really just a really great group of people. Obviously, you guys will be playing for the Howard Schellenberger Trophy. Having been here before, just curious on – how much you feel like Schellenberger's legacy kind of looms and, and what your perspective on just learning about him from your time before and now? Well, he was a program builder, and, and the guy who I uh, played for and coached for, Bruce Snyder, was a program builder. So Bruce Snyder uh, played fullback at Oregon, uh, and then as a brief rundown, he coached at SC, coached Charles White and Ricky Bell and those guys, and then he went to the NFL. Uh and coached uh, Eric Rams when he got when he set the record. So he was a he was a running back guy. He gets the head job in New Mexico State. Wins enough in New Mexico State to go to Utah State. They win a couple championships. Goes to Cal, uh, and in his fourth year, they end up number nine in the country. Beat the brakes off of Clemson in the Citrus Bowl. Goes to Arizona State and was then within you know sixty second national championship. So that's kind of how I grew up. Uh, and Coach Schnellenberger, I think, was the same way. You know, he took some programs that nobody thought much of, and, like, when he was at Miami, I don't think Miami was winning very much, and so he kind of built that, came here, helped Louisville. So um, I kind of look at us like that. We're still kind of, you know, not the biggest brand in this league or even the country as it pertains to college football. But we, in our minds – we are and we are going to play with anybody and we're going to work as hard as anybody in these offices and we're going to compete when we get out there so you know we we still feel like we're helping Louisville become uh bigger Ron obviously for offenses heading into a road environment they have to deal with the raucous crowd and the noise and all that but what is it for defenses heading into a road environment that makes it so difficult to kind of perform in the road sometimes? You've got to travel. Defensive special teams have to travel. You have to do that. Uh, you're not going to win if you don't. So what I mean by that is got to play well on special teams and you've got to play well on defense to win these road games. The games that we won we've done that. The road game that we didn't win we did not play uh, good on defense. We did not play with any energy or enthusiasm. Uh, you know, our, the numbers were okay. I mean, we were under 300 yards total and all that. But the reality is that wasn't the story of the game. The story of the game was is we had a chance to win the game if we would have played as well as we could play on defense, and we did not do that. And it was for due to a lack of uh, intensity, in my opinion, and energy and those things. But you, you have got to play good special teams because, you know, that's, you know, field position is a real thing and so when you play in these games and you got them pinned back or let's say they make a big play and they have great field position and now the crowd's into it and now they got a shorter field to work with and all those things just like when you pin them back you know now they take a step back a little bit too so uh, special teams and defense have to travel thank you